let's travel back to a simpler time in gaming history and bring a friend. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 multiplayer NES games. For this list, we're looking at the best titles ever released for the NES console that were best enjoyed in simultaneous play between two or more friends. That means we're excluding multiplayer games that were primarily turn-based, such as Super Mario Bros. 3. Even though it has a fun battle mode, that isn't enough to earn it a spot on this list. Number 10, Life Force. A sequel to Konami's popular 1985 forced scrolling shooter Gradius. This game was originally released on arcade under the title Salamander. It was later ported to the NES and given the arguably more appealing North American title of Life Force. While Gradius was praised for its forward thinking power up system and satisfying gameplay, Life Force pushed the boundaries of the game even further. It was one of the first shooters to switch between horizontal and vertically oriented levels. It also introduced multiplayer to the Gradius franchise, a feature that added greater depth and strategy. Flying through an alien body can be daunting, but it's a little easier with a buddy. Number 9, Battletoads. Poor Battletoads, forever thought of as the poor man's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hey, at least they can take comfort in the fact that they're more respected than the Biker Mice from Mars, Street Sharks, and the dreaded Cyborgs. While this 1991 beat-em-up game may have been designed to cash in on the popularity of the Turtles, it proved itself to be a franchise worthy of winning six Nintendo Power Awards the year of its release. Single player was tough, but multiplayer was punishingly difficult. Thankfully, it was also insanely addictive, and the level of variety, wacky plotline, and unique game mechanics was more than enough to hold the attention of two people. Number 8, Blades of Steel. Between this and Life Force, Konami had a great year in 1988. Retro sports games are generally loved or hated, as the technical limitations of the time often resulted in boring, poorly designed games. Thankfully, for every 10 terrible sports titles, there is a gem like this one. It actually won the 1988 Nintendo Power Award for the best player versus player game. Blades of Steel felt fast paced compared to the competition, and much like contemporary hockey video games, it embraced the fact that fighting is, albeit unofficially, an essential part of the sport. I mean, the fighting mode felt a lot like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, which is hard not to love. Number 7, Spy vs. Spy. Originally released in 1984 for the Atari 8-bit and the Commodore 64, this game was good enough that people were still more than happy to buy it when it was released a full four years later for the NES. It was a split-screen versus title, based on the popular Mad Magazine comic strip, in which players had to search an embassy, collect items, and escape the building before their competitors. Players could fight each other or leave traps for their enemies throughout the many rooms. It was crucially important to remember where you left your traps though, as they did not distinguish between friend or foe. Number 6, Bomberman 2. The Bomberman concept is so simple, yet incredibly compelling. You're on a grid with destructible blocks, you're equipped with bombs, you use said bombs to blow up everything and everyone you come across, but be careful not to blow yourself up. However, what the original Bomberman lacked was a competitive battle mode. So naturally, when Bomberman 2 was released in North America for the NES, it included not only a two-player versus mode, but also a three-player battle mode for NES owners with the four-score NES multi-tap accessory. The goal of multiplayer was clean and simple fun. Blow up your friends. Number 5, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Arcade Game. As its title suggests, this game was a port of the incredibly fun beat-em-up arcade version, allowing for players to enjoy the turtle-rocking, foot-soldier-smashing street skating action at home. The NES port extended existing levels and added two entirely new ones, complete with corresponding bosses, providing hours of fun. Two players switching between four turtles against the minions of the Shredder in the comfort of their own home? Life did not get any better in 1990. 
Number four, Chip 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 and Dale Rescue Rangers, yeah. This was one seriously good looking NES game. Published by Capcom, it felt like a pretty standard side scrolling platformer, in which players could pick up and throw objects in the environment to kill enemies. But Capcom nailed the Disney aesthetic in translating the game to the NES, making it one of the nicer looking titles to grace the console. In true Capcom style, they also provided tight controls, satisfying and addictive gameplay, and a bug-free experience. While it may have not been overly challenging, it was the perfect co-op game to bridge age gaps. Simple enough for kids, but more than enough fun for adults. Number 3. Bubble Bubble The 80s were a more forgiving time when it came to naming video games. But don't judge this game by its title. It is multiplayer action platforming at its best. <laughs> Having been turned into Bubble Dragons, two brothers fight to save their kidnapped girlfriends by fighting through caves of monsters. Creative and colorful, the game consisted of blowing bubbles to trap enemies, then bursting them to destroy the enemies within. Levels were limited to the edge of the screen, making it easy to get cornered and overwhelmed. Coordination between the players, then, was crucial to survival. Also, there were multiple endings that depended on you completing the game as a team. Number 2. Double Dragon 2 – The Revenge Purists maintain that the Double Dragon titles are best played as arcade games, but anyone who's played Double Dragon 2 on the NES will tell you that it's as good a support as you could ask for. When the original Double Dragon made the jump to the NES, it was reduced to a single player game, which stripped away much of what made it such a fun standout title. For the sequel, porting to the NES still resulted in significant changes, but two player co-op was preserved, finally giving NES gamers the true Double Dragon experience. Co-op beat em up action at its very finest. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Contra Forget specifying NES, many argue that Contra is one of the best multiplayer games ever. Few titles on the NES can rival it as an action shooter, and no other title on the console comes anywhere close in terms of a two-player experience. While Contra Masters can burn through the game in under 15 minutes, beginners should definitely take advantage of the famous 30 lives Konami code. Single hit deaths paired with an endless barrage of bullets makes for a very steep learning curve. The difficulty is extreme, but with great level design, diverse power-ups, and an incredible potential for coordinated co-op strategies, we're still addicted 25 years later. Do you agree with our list? In your opinion, what's the best NES game to break out when you've got company over? For more top 10s to share with a friend published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Touchdown!